is Mr. This is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We're going to take you backstage to look in on a rehearsal. Now look. There's our This Is Your Life musical director, Von Dexter. That's his back. He's a very handsome man. You'll see in a moment. His orchestra's there. Von's working with tonight's principal subject in uh, what she thinks is a rehearsal for another program, Truth or Consequences, on which she will appear uh, this coming Friday night. Now, Steve Dunn, the nighttime master of ceremonies of Truth or Consequences, is in there, too. So let's listen to what's going on. I'll join them in a minute. Okay, boys, right at the very yep. top. And this time with Steve Dunn. Okay, all right. Ready, Steve? Yep, 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 yep. I say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to show you how a song that was made popular some 30 years ago would sound if it were played in today's rock and roll style. The song, that's my weakness now. Fun? say 30 years ago when that song was first introduced to the world it sounded like this well now let's do it standing here with me is the star who first introduced that song and brought the world a new catchphrase miss helen kane yes right -o. looks like it's going to be... Uh, how do you do? I'd like to break in here in your rehearsal, Steve, for just a moment. I have a phrase I'd like to introduce to Miss Helen Kane, too. It goes something like this. Miss Helen Kane, tonight, this is your life. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kane, although you're going to be on Hoover Consequences with Steve Dunn here on uh, this Friday night, we're going to be looking at you. This was a way we had of getting you to Hollywood oh, from New York. <laughs> thank you, Von Dexter, very much. And thank you, Steve Dunn, you, for Steve. helping us arrange our surprise. We'll be watching you Friday night, boy, with Helen. Helen, if you'll accompany me to our uh, This Is Your Life studio, will you do that? Sure. I All right. You'll find an audience waiting to find out how a spur of the moment boop boop a doop on your part became the symbol of an era. And while we go, let's look at a youngster who's mighty happy. And if you heard the good news that he's bringing home, you'd be glad too. Here we go. Ah! Oh, Mom! Look, Mom! No cavities! Oh, Jimmy, that's wonderful. The dentist says, no new cavities this visit. I'm glad we changed to Crest toothpaste. Today, happy scenes like this are taking place thanks to Crest, the toothpaste that stops soft spots from turning into cavities. For proof, let's visit the Midwestern town of Bloomington. Here, over a four-year period, thousands of grown-ups and children took part in repeated tests on Crest, the most extensive testing program ever conducted on any toothpaste. The results? Well, x-rays and dental examinations showed Crest cut cavities almost in half compared with ordinary toothpaste. That's because Crest, with its special fluoride formula, Floristan, stops soft spots from turning into cavities. Make Crest your family toothpaste, and you too may hear... Well, Mom! Look, Mom! No cavities! How are you doing? I'm shaking. Well, let's go back to the time when you were not Helen Kane at all. Oh, yes. Just Helen Schroeder, yes, with not even a boop boop a dupe to your name. No. This is your life. <laughs> New York and a third child is born to Mr. and Mrs. Lewis Schroeder, you, Helen Kane. Now, your mother, uh, Ellen, had come from Ireland, hadn't she, a few years before? Of course, yes. you know that now. You well, didn't now know it I then. <laughs> and your father, Lewis, in 1904, a trucker's helper for the American Express Company, uh, had been born in the Bronx. Remember, Helen, we really did get to know the Bronx. We kept moving from apartment to apartment. <laughs> Your oldest sister, now Mrs. James Patrick Fogarty, still of the Bronx. Here's Sister Gertrude. Hi, Don. I have to get here to see you for Christmas. <laughs> I suppose it's the impossible. 
It was supposed it's to be Buffalo. in... Buffalo. Yeah, this is Buffalo. Hollywood. Uh, Buffalo, Hollywood. It was... Get out of here. Gertrude, it was kind of the fashion to move a lot in those days, wasn't it? Yes, and it was easy, too. <laughs> if my mother liked the wallpaper in the Poffin house down the block, and it was better than ours, why, we moved. <laughs> what school? And we, so we didn't have to pay the last, the first of the last month's rent because they didn't do that in those days. That's a pretty good idea. I what school did you attend, Helen? Uh, I went to St. Anthony's School in the Bronx. Yes. And, uh, you receive elocution lessons from yes. the nuns. You're so good that you're given the part of the Queen of the Fairies in a school <laughs> pageant. Now, what did your mother have to say about that, Helen? Well, uh, I was the queen, and there was another little girl in my class uh, she was uh, just a fairy, and my mother used to work for her, and uh, we considered them very rich. They owned a house, so this day we both came home to school, and she had to bring 50 cents for a costume, and I was to bring $3. And my mother said, oh, no, now wait a minute, see? So she went over to Mother Superior, and she said, uh, now, you know, I'm a working woman, and I want Helen to go on this thing, but she says, this Eleanor only has to bring 50 cents, and they're rich, and I... Helen, three dollars for a costume. She says, yes, but Mrs. Shirley says, Helen is the queen, and Eleanor is only a fairy. She says, make her a fairy. I'll only spend 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> that was my law. Helen <laughs> played hooky a lot, didn't she? Oh, don't tell her. <laughs> we know that she didn't finish uh, grade school, but she played hooky a lot, didn't she? Yes, and the truant officer became a regular friend of the family. <laughs> oh, why? He'd sit down with my mother and have coffee and wait for Helen to come home. <laughs> well, thank you, Gertrude. Mrs. James Patrick Fogarty of the Bronx, New York. We'll see you later. I can't get over it. This is fabulous. You're telling all the secrets. 1912. The Knights of Columbus Hall and a little tenor voice sing. Sure, I love the dear silver that shines in your hair. The tenor has deepened a bit, Helen, the but the song is the same. Do you have any idea who the singer might be? You haven't heard that voice in 45 years, so it's understandable if you don't. And we had quite a time finding it ourselves. It belongs to Vincent O'Donnell of New York City. <laughs> What do you and Helen Kane have in common, Mr. O'Donnell? Why, uh, Helen, you and I have in common this medal. Oh, my goodness. That 45 <laughs> years ago we were on a stage oh. in a contest yeah. that was to decide the best boy and girl singer in New York. But you were both declared the winners, weren't you, Mr. O'Donnell? Yes, we're, we both won the contest and were I given can't. this medal by... Mr. John McCormick. Yes. Well, I'll be done. And Helen... <laughs> I haven't found you. I haven't... I, I, I never... That will all come out later. <laughs> Helen, you had the, lo the loveliest voice in those days yeah. without a boop or even yeah, a doop. I was song called Soprano. That will... Uh, Vincent's with the stock brokerage firm uh, Hemp oh, Noy. Yeah. Now, aren't you, Mr. Dawson? Yes, and you'd have probably had a tough time finding me if it wasn't for the article in Mr. Walter Winchell's column well, <laughs> saying that he wanted to find me. That's right. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> Helen, and to yeah, answer your question... <laughs> Walter was oh. good enough, Walter Winchell, well, we uh, to, to put an item. Walter, I want to thank you for putting that item in your column. <laughs> for we were having difficulty tracing Mr. O'Donnell. Don't go, Mr. O'Donnell. You've got to take a bow after all, 45 years ago. When Vincent read Walter Winchell's column, uh, he got in touch with it. Thank you, Walter, and thank you, Vincent O'Donnell of New York City. <laughs> in show business and now it's in your blood. Others advise you to try to get jobs that would keep you off the stage, but these are not for Helen Schroeder. 1920, you're playing in an act with the Marx Brothers. 1922, you're on the Keith Vaudeville circuit playing in Stars of the Future. 1924, you marry Joe Kane and Helen Schroeder becomes Helen Kane. 1925, you're at the Winter Garden in a Schubert production of Night in Spain. Oh, you no. give me just one kiss, uh -huh. and I want another kiss. Oh, don't be like that. 
1928 finds your life reaching a high and a low. The low comes with your separation from Joe Kane and the death of your beloved mother. The high comes with your meeting a man who is to influence your whole career. I needed a singer to work at the Paramount Theater and thought of a little girl who kept pestering me all the time, and that was you, Helen. The man who played a tremendous part in the success that Helen Kane was to become. Here, from New York City, is Mr. Paul Ash. Here he is. Oh, 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 this man's life would fill three hours, wouldn't it, Helen, with all the people oh, he has worked with. Paul Ash, you had given Ginger Rogers, Fifi Dorsey, Martha Ray, and Ethel Merman their big breaks in the act which you headlined at the Paramount Theater in New York. Tell us how Helen Kane fared under your banner. Well, Lou Warren, the theatrical agent, first introduced Helen to me after she had auditioned to the staff well, without any success at all. I and I needed a girl one day, and I went to John Murray Anderson, the producer of the show, and I said, put Helen into the show. And uh, he said Helen's little voice would never be heard in this it's big right, theater. Yes. Now, these were the days before microphones. Yes. Yeah. You insisted, however, that uh, uh, she'd be heard because of her penetrating vocal quality, so like the tone of a violin, Paul. Right? Yes, I finally got John Murray Anderson to agree to put her in the show. How you almost missed your real starring break. We'll find out in just a moment, oh. Helen Kane. In the meantime, you and Paul Ash sit down, reminisce a minute while we relax a moment with a family that relaxes at the end of each day with ivory soap. It's pure pleasure. Well, day is done, and Dad's done in. Whew, what a rough one. Now for him, an ivory bath, pure pleasure. Look, he relaxes, and well, he might. Why, ivory floats, stays right in sight. Twins, too, had troubles, scrapped all day. Now they're content. They love to play in ivory suds. Sure, suds galore. It lathers fast. This soap gives more. Poor mom. Her problems came in pairs. Now she'll relax, forget her cares. In ivory suds, she's soothed again. They're mild enough for baby's skin. Why, one can almost hear her say, a perfect way to end the day. An ivory bath is pure pleasure. Thank you very much, and back to This Is Your Life, boop boop a doop girl, Helen Kane. Now, as soon as you had gotten John Murray Anderson to give Helen a spot in the show at the Paramount, uh, you notified Helen to appear for rehearsal, didn't you, Paul Ash? Yes, and you were late, and John Murray <laughs> Anderson was furious. <laughs> Helen was wearing corrective shoes at this time, <laughs> and they squeaked, and when they couldn't find her for the rehearsal in time, Mr. Anderson said, where is that little so-and-so with the squeaky shoes and the squeaky voice? You were out buying a, a kind of a $12 dress to get exactly. there, too, weren't you? Yes. And you do arrive, and the rehearsal begins, and you sing That's My Weakness Now, ad-libbing a boop boop a doop at the end. The and when you go on that night, you're a sensational success with your one song, That's My Weakness Now, and your historic ad-lib boop boop a doop captures the nation's fancy. What? Thank you, Paul Ash of New York City. You'll see Helen later. from the old collection while you're singing. Now, as a matter of fact, not such an old collection. A lot of they're coming back, you know, and they're singing. And while you're singing with Paul Ash at the Paramount Theater, two songwriters come to the theater to hear you. We felt you were great, Helen. You had such a different delivery, like a breath of fresh air. The voice of a good friend of yours, Helen, and one of America's top songwriters, composer of such hits as Three Little Words, oh, Thinking Harry. of You, and Who's Sorry Now, Mr. Harry Ruby. <laughs> at the Paramount, weren't you, Harry Ruby? Yes, my partner, Bert Kalman, and I had just finished writing a score for a show called Good Boy, and after we saw her at the Paramount, we recommended that she play the comedian role opposite Dan Healy. Mm -hmm. So she came to rehearsal. She was on time. Yeah. Well, she, <laughs> she, that she, time. Yeah, she picked up a copy of a song called I Want to Be Loved by You, and I must say she sang it rather indifferently. Yes. I don't think she liked it at first, but when she got into the middle of that song and she let go with those poo-poo-poo-doo, <laughs> 
It was electric, I tell you. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, you have no idea what a little thing like that can do for a song. And Helen Kane's boop, boop, a doop made I Want to Be Love You a smash hit and made the show a hit. Well, and the show wouldn't have been nearly as good without Helen Kane, but don't quote me. I won't, Harry. <laughs> Let you and I sing that song the way we did at that audition. Come on, Helen Kane. How about it? Right here. Right here, Helen. Come on. Here, dear. Come around this side and look in here. I want to be loved by you, just you and nobody else but you. I want to be loved. to Hollywood for five starring pictures at $100,000 a picture, to England for a command performance before the king and queen. There were Helen Kane contests, Helen Kane toys, Helen Kane dolls. Hello, Helen, darling. You were one of the biggest stars. You were my star. And I wanted to be just like you, dear. Yes. A great star in her own right, the inimitable Fifi Dorsey, your great friend. Ah! Yes, yes. <laughs> Years. You did. You? God love you. Oh, yeah. In the 30 years, you know, it's a long years. time. Don't tell them. <laughs> but even before I knew Helen, she was my idol. Yeah. And you know, to you there who are looking in this uh, uh, show tonight, yeah. uh, and if you are too young to remember Ellen Kane's boo boop a doop well, it was the exclamation point of the roaring 20s. <laughs> and you remember <laughs> you all right yourself in those roaring 20s, <laughs> as I recall. Yes, in the roaring <laughs> That's what I started to do. Yes. And it was in the years when they had the uh, roaster with the rumble seat yeah. and the raccoon oh, coats oh, and the chemise huh. dresses. <laughs> <laughs> what did you see do and do 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 with the hair with the dresses? Oh, oh that. darling. You were such a sensation. <laughs> and you know, something. and you know something, what? everybody who came to see you, they all wanted to be just like you. Thank but you know, when the bon Dieu there, he made you, he threw the pattern away. Oh. There was only one Alan oh, Kane. Oh, oh, God love you. Here, such a bombshell now as you ever were. We'll be anxious to see you in Jackie Barnett's new review, Newcomers of 1928, uh -huh. which opens at the Desert Inn in Las Vegas on February 25th. Next Tuesday. <laughs> Come and see Good, me. I will. Good luck. God bless you. <laughs> when we did her life, it took three hours, oh, Helen. No, I can imagine. 1935, the bubble burst. Your boo boo ba doop which had skyrocketed you to international fame, is no longer heard. Do you want to tell us what happened then, Helen? Well... In what, what year was Were you, that? this was 35, when well, uh, the bubble burst, did they say, yes. you were... Well, I tell you, I had uh, quite a bit of uh, domestic trouble, and my mother had died, and I guess I, it came all a little bit too fast. I worked very hard, sometimes 20 hours a day, recording and uh, pictures and personal appearance, five and six shows a day. And I was burning the candle at both ends, and the first thing you know, I felt myself getting very weak, depressed, and uh, I didn't care to go out with people, and I realized I was getting sick. Yeah, you're hospitalized with a nervous breakdown. Yes, actually. I did. I had a, a very bad breakdown, and uh, it uh, took some time for me to get well. And uh, Do you remember old Ironsides, Helen? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she apparently does. Here she is. You haven't seen her in over 23 years. Nano Carter. My old Nano. Your old Ironsides, you call her. Her that name 
Kane. Oh, when you I heard that a Helen Kane was to be your patient, you were a nurse in the hospital, right? right. Uh, now... I need one now. The name meant nothing to you, did it, Nano Carter? Oh, not a thing. I didn't know. But when I saw a Helen, I said, why, you look like by boop 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 doop And she says, well, I am boop 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 doop and since then, we've been very fast friends. Oh, a friendship she that has so lasted all through the years. All through these years. She was so good to me. And, and, you know, she's so tiny, and she really laid the law down. And, you know, she's from Boston. <laughs> she used to say Pasadena. And I nicknamed her old iron size because, brother, she is as tiny as she is. Well, thank you, Nano <laughs> Carter. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And you're going to have a lot of time to talk with her later at the party. Get over it. 1939, New York City. Helen and I had been partners in the show many years before, and now we became partners in real life. Yes, your devoted husband, Helen, a famed trooper in his own right, the night mayor of Broadway, Dan Healy. Here he is. Oh, my. You two had first met when you were both appearing. You already knew it. I'll kill him. <laughs> Isn't that right, Dan? That's right, Ralph. We co-starred in that show in 1928, little realizing that later we will be married. Yes. Why don't you sit down there, Dan, with Helen? Yeah, and in just a moment, a we'll see how a complete stranger <laughs> changes your lives in a miraculous way. But first, friends, horse and buggy days are gone. Yesterday has passed. And right now, we have something very surprising. is the end of waving lotion forever. Pace is here. New Pace. Procter & Gamble's astonishing no lotion home permanent. Ends lotion mess forever. In this envelope lies the secret. The permanence in the papers. Yes, the end papers contain the waving ingredients. You do your Pace permanent the usual way. Except you don't use messy waving lotion. Plain, clear water releases the waving action. And because each paper contains just the right amount of waving ingredients, your Pace Wave will be perfect, a lasting wave that leaves your hair so wonderfully soft and natural looking. And you, so beautiful. Get Pace, the astonishing new no lotion permanent. The years since your marriage have been filled with the joy and the sadness of sharing the good times and the bad, Helen and Dan. The millions you two have earned are gone. The Roaring Twenties, the flapper era of which you were such a part, is almost history now. You both had serious illness, and just last year you, Helen, recovered from a major operation for cancer. But something happens. On January 10th of this year, your friend Jim Bishop, author of such books as The Day Lincoln Was Shot and uh, The Day Christ Died, wrote the following uh, item in his syndicated newspaper column. Here it is. I was talking money to Helen Kane about how the last of her jewelry, $40,000 worth, had been in the hock shop so long it'll be forfeited next month. Why don't you pay the interest, I said. She laughed. You kidding? Dan and I couldn't change a quarter. Now, there was uh, quite a response to this article, wasn't there, Dan? Oh, yes. yes, Ralph. We found out there were many people left who still remembered Helen Kane and Dan Healy. One letter in particular came from a housewife in Salt Lake City. Uh, she asked how much it would cost to recover your jewelry. Now, what did you answer her, Helen? Well, uh, I answered her. I told her how much it would be and that the interest was due, and she told me in her letter that she might be able to float along. Let's see, it cost about $10,000, wasn't it? Well, about eight or $10,000. I, I, it's between that and so. I, I wrote her this letter. She's a wonderful person, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't hear from her for a, a while, and uh, she then sent me a letter. His housewife uh, in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, City, the mother of five children, yes. a, a, a person who had never met you, sends you a cashier's check well, for $10,000. Well, she $10, called $10. up, uh, yes, and uh, she said, this money, I'm going to help you uh, get your jewelry out, and I have to have it back at a certain time. If you can get it out and realize something on it, uh, and just send it back to me, just like that. Yes. Just uh, a cashier's check. She didn't ask for any security, mm -hmm. anything. Just God bless me and prayed for me. And I was able to take it out and realize something. 
And, of course, I sent the check right back. But uh, that but wonderful, that this wonderful lady. faith, I've never seen this woman, this wonderful... Well, person. now, now, Helen, let me tell you something. The jewelry has been sold, the money has been returned. Yes. We'd like you to meet this person whom you've never seen, who oh. has never met you, Mrs. Florence Valentine oh, of Salt Lake no. City, Utah. <laughs> coax her to come on, too. She didn't want to parade her, her doing it all. Would you tell us, Miss Valentine, what prompted you to do this? Well, when I read Mr. Bishop's letter, I so vividly remembered Helen Kane, all the enjoyment you had given me, and the Lord had been so good to me, I knew I had to help somebody else if I could. Isn't that wonderful? I, you uh, know, I've never seen... As you say, it's a lesson just, uh, in the faith of human faith. beings that we all should take to heart. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the world had more Mrs. Valentines oh. in it, eh? Well, that brings us to the present, Helen Kane. You sit right there, dear. It's been 30 years since your boop boop a doop first created a sensation. I'm sure it's good for 30 more years. <laughs> Here's the man who, along with Paul Ash, is responsible for your first big break. One of Hollywood's leading agents, your good friend, Mr. Lou Irwin. <laughs> Keep it, Isn't he, though? You bet. Do you remember the comments I had to you when I first put you with Paul Ash? I, I certainly do. Well, you turn out to be a very, very big star. Yes. And I still think you could be a bigger star. Oh, isn't that Well, wonderful. you've already taken steps Thank to see so. that uh, that Thank happens, so haven't you, Lou? Uh, I mean, the minute I heard you were on the Paul Ash on this show with uh, This Is Your Life with Ralph Edwards, I immediately went over and saw Frank Sinners at the Moulin Rouge. It's the biggest club in Hollywood. Frank has given me a contract to start March 18th. Oh, isn't that wonderful? A starring engagement at the Moulin Rouge oh, yes. starting March 18th, yes. and yes. this should be only the beginning, yes. right, Lou? Yes. We know that you want to get back to New York before opening at the Moulin Rouge, Helen, so we'd like to take care of your transportation back and forth, and during your engagement here at the Moulin Rouge, oh, we'd yes. like to have you and Dan so be our much. guests at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, and we want all of you to come and see Helen Kane there at the Moulin Rouge. How about it? You're going to go down and see her, ladies and gentlemen? You bet. We hope that you'll treasure the past half hour, Helen, and as a reminder to you of the events of your life, Crest would like to have you have this gold oh, charm bracelet yeah. designed by Marshall Jewelers, Fifth Avenue, New York City. Oh. And uh, you also will receive a film of tonight's program and this Bell and Howell 16 millimeter sound projector and camera. This is your life, Helen Kane. 30 years ago, you gave the world a phrase that became the catchword of an era. Perhaps in this age of satellites and guided missiles, we need your boop boop a doop to bring us back to Earth. Good luck. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Our out of time guests have flown to Hollywood by a TWA luxurious jet stream featuring exclusive siesta sleeper seats. Fly the finest. Fly TWA jet stream service. This Is Your Life has been presented by Pace, the astonishing new no-lotion home permanent. The end papers contain the waving ingredients. And by Ivory Soap, 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure. It floats. Thank you, Bob Warren. What is there in man that makes it possible for him to rebound from even the severest shocks and pick up his life in normalcy again? Well, you may find an answer to that question next week on This Is Your Life. We'll see you then. Good night. Thank you. This Is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production produced by Axel Gruenberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. Support the satellite people with a truth broadcast over Radio Free Europe and Free Europe Press. Mail your truth dollars to Crusade for Freedom, care of your local postmaster. Be sure to watch Loretta Young on most of these same...